Hello everypony, this is Nightlife again, and today I will be reading unto you, uh, chapter 4 of My Little Mommy's The Moonlit Path. And once my browser decides to actually load the freaking page, we'll get right to reading. We already did the spider, right? <laughs> Look, ma, I'm doing a spider. I'm a spider, I'm doing a spider, I'm doing a spider! Okay, so after this, we're going to be reading of Steam Gears and Wings, and then Vinyl and Octavia University Days. Of Steam Gears and Wings. Uh, huh. You know, I always liked that one uh, banner for a quest for film fiction of Twilight and Trixie on a park bench having some eats and drinks or eat and, eat and twilight's case and Trixie a little drink and it looks like they're getting along <sighs> if Trixie weren't such a bitch I bet I'd like her I I guarantee you beneath all beneath the holier than thou I'm better than you thing I guarantee Trixie is a good pony and I, and that most of you would tap that. <laughs> okay. Chapter four: My Little Mommies, The Moonlit Path. Authored by Three Power. Above the forest, Princess Luna was looking around, confused. Perhaps we should have got requested Rainbow Dash give us specific coordinates. She mused, flying, uh, flying overhead in the general direction Rainbow had come from, in search of the mansion she had described. To her right, a beam of light shot up into the sky, into the sky, with the sound of a blast echoing with it. Without a moment's thought, she thought she flew towards she flew towards whence it had come. Come back here, my pretty pony, the spider ca called after twilight as she ran through the hallway, flinging anything she could levitate back into back at the beast. The narrowness of the hallway meant the spider couldn't couldn't be able to dodge. That was the hypothesis, anyway. The major flaw in it lay at the fact that he was vaporizing everything she f she threw at him with a shot of acid from his maw. Now Twilight was throwing things back at him just to avoid getting spit at herself. Still, she was running out of things to throw, not to mention the hallway to run through. She dodged into the last doorway at the end of the hallway just as another glob of acid th flew by her face burning through the wall on the end. Once inside, she flung everything in the room at the doorway, creating a makeshift barricade, before going over to the wall that connected this room to the next. Twilight noticed a large hole in, the, in this wall while, ex while exploring this, th this direction earlier. The plaster had fallen out, leaving only rotten wooden beam beams behind. She used her magic to push at the wood, trying to snap it so she, so she had space to squeeze through. Meanwhile, the spider was clawing at the barricade with his, with his, with his legs. Are we sure it's a he now? Because I'm pretty sure spiders don't, don't have packages. No, ditzy. Not that kind of package. Mm. Moving the furniture out of the way piece by piece until he finally had just enough room to stick his head through. There, he saw a pony he was, the pony he was chasing standing defenseless and in plain sight. Got you! He, sa he gleefully s called out as he launched an another glob of acid at her. Instinctively moving aside at the sound of his voice, the acid flew right by her and hit the wooden beams, dissolving them within seconds. The two of them shared a newly f shared stared at the newly formed pony-sized hole in the wall for a second before Twilight gathered her magic and used it to shove all the objects in the barricade so that the spider's newly, vis newly visible head was crushed up against the doorway. Ugh, he, he croaked out. Can't breathe. Twilight gingerly stepped through the hole and slowly made her way over to the neighboring room's door, opening it and opening it to get back out into the hallway. On this side of the barricade, the spider's legs were flailing wildly in an attempt to, to get his head free. I'll kill you, pony! He screeched. Kill you, dead! <laughs> now he just sounds like he's from the Hicks. <laughs> Monster, 
Why do my still be so hard to open? Twilight took a moment to catch her breath. She had it trapped for a moment, but the problem now was that if she ran too far away from the things she was levitating, they would simply collapse and the spider was, would be free again. The other option was to incapacitate the spider, but unfortunately she, but unfortunately a sleep spell was not one of the 25 and counting tricks she could cast on demand. She would need the spell in front of her. She could simply choke him until he was unconscious, but despite the, his claim that he couldn't breathe, he, he was having no trouble spewing insults at her even now. Nevertheless, she attempted to suffocate the spider for a good five minutes before she began to feel her spell reaching its limit. Re retreat, w retreat, it was, uh, retreat it was then. Twilight stepped back from the spider to her maximum levitation range, then teleported away, back into the entrance hall, where she found Applejack waiting for her. There you are, Twi! Applejack called out a little too loudly. What happened to the princess? Shh! Twilight hissed, but it was too late. Hearing Applejack's voice told the spider that his prey hadn't gone far, and it hurries, hurriedly scuffled into the entrance hall. Ponies! It screeched. I will drink your blood and lay my eggs in your brains! That ain't Luna! Uh, that ain't Luna, Applejack said flatly, eyes wide. Move! Twilight called out, shoving Applejack aside as another gob of acid was launched at, at the two of them. The two ponies spread out, but the spider was primarily inter interested in getting revenge on Twilight, and thus ignored Applejack and charged at, straight at her. Twilight shot off a few beams of energy, but it was barely slowing him down. He was two feet away from her, mouth open and fangs wide, primed to bite. It was the end. And then Applejack's lasso wrapped around its neck. Got ya, ugly! She, yanked, she said as she, yanked it, as she yanked on it hard, managing to flip the monstrous spider on its back with, a, with its legs flailing wildly. Not missing the opportunity, Twilight heavy, heavy, quickly levitated the heavy chandelier from before, over and unceremoniously dropped it on the spider, trapping it. Gah, gah, let me go! It roared out. Let's get out of here, AJ. T Twilight said. Applejack nodded at the, and the two of them headed down the hallway to the mirror room. To the mirror room, ignoring the spider's screams of screams of of indignation, and soon they were out of sight. However, the spider began dis dissolving into a strange green mist. Fluttershy was standing on the ground outside the mansion next to the circular hole circular hole that had made that they had made in the mirror's mirror room ceiling. A short distance away from her sat the three foals and Rarity, whom she had airlifted out of the room at one at a time. Okay, now for Pinky. Now for Pinky. Fluttershy said as she began as she prepared to jump down again. What about me? Pinky uh what, what about what about me? Pinky asked, standing next to her. Huh? <laughs> Fluttershy asked as she looked down at... Oh, huh? Huh? Fluttershy asked as she looked down in the hole and then back up at Pinky. But how did you get up here? I don't know, she answered. <laughs> it's Pinky. Physics don't apply. <laughs> it reminds me of an image macro. Fuck physics, I'm Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Ah, uh, Pinky. Physics majors fucking hate her. Luckily, I'm not one. Eee. Twilight and, App and Applejack had just run into the room. Putting the issue up with Pinky aside, Fluttershy jumped down and joined them. What happened to the princess? As she asked and began to lift Applejack into the air. Turned into a giant spider. Twilight answered plainly, got crushed on her chandelier. You wish, came a hissing voice from behind them. Fluttershy dropped Applejack back on her hooves and gasped in horror. The spider had entered the room. Oh, come on! Twilight yelled at the beast. How did you get out? Shapeshifter remembered? Shapeshifter, remember? He snarled, he snarled out with a, twist, with a twisted spider grin. Then why didn't you shapeshift when I had you trapped in the doorway? The spider answered the question with a gobble of, with a gobble of acid. 
The police quickly got quickly dodged, but the spider anticipated that and quickly strode forward and smacked Toy on the on the head with a foreleg, knocking her to the ground. Because you could defeat anything I could turn into, he said as he positioned himself over her, prepared to bite. Only to get stuck in a wave of confetti. <laughs> <laughs> Part never leave home up without my party, Cannon. Pinkie Pie stood in front of the monster with a determined look on her face. Party Cannon in tow. I knew it. He began hacking and coughing up party supplies as Twilight used the distraction to slip away and join the others. Four ponies now stood before the convulsing spider, with Rarity safely located above ground with the foals. What's the plan, Twi? Applejack asked. Distract him until I'm ready, she said. Then get him in sight. She began channeling magic as the others moved into position. When it felt like she had finally got the last of the confetti out, he had finally got the last of the confetti out, the monster looked up to see Pinky, the pink pony in front of him. Hi again, she said and blasted him in the face with another burst of confetti. Before he could even scream out in pain, a lasso pulled taut around his neck. That does it! He choked out and as he turned upwards as he turned towards Applejack and prepared to launch acid again. However, all that happened was that was that a balloon slowly inflated inside his mouth, gradually getting bigger and bigger as it filled, as it filled with, with acid. And then it popped, spraying the contents all over the, the spider's face. He writhed around in pain, eyes shut. With, uh, with Applejack trying to keep them steady, him steady with the, her lasso. Jeez, Pinky, Applejack said through teeth that were clenched tightly around the, her rope. What are your balloons made of? Family, re family recipe. <laughs> Pinky answered, loading confetti and balloons into her cannon for another shot. Where does she get that stuff? I, I, I bet it's made of amnesium. I bet some of her Pinky magic goes into it somehow. Earth 20 magic, I swear. When the burning pain finally began to, subs to subside, the spider dared op to open his eyes, and then met with pure terror. It was a yellow pegasus. No. No, it wasn't. It was eyes. Just... Oh my gosh! Just eyes. Eyes from which no creature could possibly escape. The pegasus. No, the eyes were saying something. Step forward? Okay. The spider lost in the power of Fluttershy's stare. Oh my gosh. This is why Fluttershy is second best pony. And trust me, it's a very, very close second. <laughs> but she's not awesome all the time. So, yeah. Pinky is awesome all the time. I began stepping forward, climbing over the rocks and, lo and logs in the center of the room until it towered above the rest of them in the, in the high spot. We're ready, Twy. Good, Twy answered as the magic around her horn swelled. Mm, swelling horns. She let it go in the form of a, of a beam of pure energy, of pure magical energy which engulfed the spider and sent it flying to, toward, up, upwards through the sky, where it hung for a few moments before crashing, before crashing down in the clearing out, outside the mansion, only a few yards from the foals and rarity, causing the former to begin crying and the latter to shriek in surprise. Twilight lifted herself and her friends into the, into the air with a bubble of magic and hovered up the ground level, where she began to sp a spell to blast the spider twitching on the ground in front of her again. He stirred, sh shakily getting to his feet despite the damage he had received. Hmm. Hmm. Whoa. Shake gets awesome, y'all. You win this round, ponies. He hissed, slowly, slowly beginning to shuffle away from them. But we shall prevail in the end. Lord Schleffner shall have these foals. Those foals. No! Came a booming voice from him, behind him. He shall not! <laughs> this is why Luna is fucking awesome. The spider quickly turned his head and gasped in horror. Night, Mama! He began to say, before he was engulfed in a beam of moonlight, which shot him up into the sky. Forming a new star. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> Channel that energy, bitch! <laughs> okay, don't piss off Luna. You you don't want to get sent to the moon and a burst of light. 
Luna, Twilight gasped out in one in wonder, beginning to trot forward. Wait, Rarity called out. That icky spider monster just pretended to be the princess. What if this is, is this is an imposter's lair? A valid line of inquiry. A valid line of inquiry, dear Rarity. Luna answered as, as she stepped forward. Very well. Ask us anything. A very well. Ask us anything only the one, the true princess of the night would know. <laughs> oh, 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 Pinky called out, bouncing up and down and throwing her hoof in the air. Me, me, me. Er, yes, fair Pinky Pie. <laughs> For, is the moon made out of, uh, Luna asked. Is the moon made out of cheese? For a moment, there was a, there was silence, save for the crying of the foals, as all eyes moved from Pinky to Luna. Er, no, it is not, Luna answered. In that moment, Pinky gasped, the biggest gasp she had ever gasped in her life, and then, Imposter! she shouted. <laughs> she tried to rush forwards at the princess, who was flailing, but was restrained by Fluttershy and Applejack. Twilight rolled her eyes and magically zipped Pinky's lips shut before turning towards the princess and asking, Uh, who was I dressed as for Nightmare Night last year? Stars rolled the bearded, she asked. She answered immediately. Bunny, his name should come up tonight of all nights. She glanced up at the sky morosely. See, Pinky? Twilight answered, said, unzipping the, the former's lips. It's Luna. The pink pony looked over at the moon princess. Her lips began to beginning to tremble. But I wasn't ready to hear that. She bawled, rushing over to the foals, who were also also still crying. And neither were they. Foals should shouldn't have to learn about the harsh realities this early. <laughs> Twilight zipped Pinky's mouth shut again, then glanced over at the at the, at the scream, screaming babies. I guess we'll have to calm them down again, she said, frowning. Allow us, Twilight Sparkle. Luna stepped forward and and casting a spell on the three foals, who immediately ceased crying and fell asleep on the, on the spot. We wouldn't normally recommend doing that, she added, but we can't afford their cries attracting any more trouble. Twilight nodded. Anyway, uh, Luna? Applejack asked, as Applejack said. We've already had a We've had a really rough night so far, and I sort of got the impression that impression you know more about what's going on than we do. So could you uh, fill us in? Certainly, Luna responded. We shall explain all we know as we walk, but first. <laughs> she stepped away from the others and gathered a massive amount of energy in her, in her, ho her horn, her eyes glowing white. Bear witness. For the spell you ye are about to see has not been cast in over a millennium. There was a white flash of light from Luna's horn, and then the ground below the gathered ponies appeared a wavy, opaque white of white, opaque, uh, uh, appear a, appeared a wavy, opaque w line of white light that began where she was standing and headed off into the woods in the, in the direction of Manhattan. This, little ponies, is the moonlit path. Luna said as she turned tw back towards them. For as long as the moon hangs in the sky above, no spawn of Slythnir will be able to lay hoof on any pony who stands upon it. The ponies ga gasped in awe. Now gather thy foals and thy things. We make for, Man for, Manhatt we make for Manhattan for forthwith. The five ponies did as the princess commanded, and within a few moments they were off. Now then, Luna began. We suppose we shall begin by explaining what brought us here tonight. Princess Luna told the others about how she had seen Rainbow Dash's sonic rain boom and teleported over to investigate. T TP, motherfucker! How she had ris rescued the Pegasus from the monstrous ravens that had attacked her, and how she had arranged for Spike to contact Celestia. Poor Rainbow, Fluttershy said sadly as Luna finished. So that spider must have been nearby, nearby while it while you two were talking, Twilight observed. <laughs> it would seem so. All right, so we clearly have a bunch of monsters after us, Rarity said, but I just can't fathom what they would want with a few newborns. That, Luna continued, is a much longer story. She took a deep breath and then began to tell her tale. Her tale. It all began when Luna was born, 
a, many, a mere 40 years after the founding of Equestria, when ponies first truly discovered harmony. She and her honorary sister Celestia were born as alicorns, ponies with the, with the blood of all three tribes flowing through their veins in approximately equal amounts. Coming of this new, com, the coming of this new tribe was looked upon a as a blessing. For a long time, the unicorns had raised both sun and moon. The Pegasi controlled the weather, and the earth ponies had used their connection to the soil to bring li forth life that no other that no other tribe could. But with the birth of, these, of the alicorns, was there any was there any doubt whose rule would ensure eternal harmony? With an alicorn on the throne. There would be no fear of favoritism, as, as would be from a sole ruler of a sing, of a single tribe, nor would there be bickering between an elected council made up of members of different tribes. So it was that the unicorns, so it was that the unicorns willfully relinquished control of the sun and moon to the young alicorns of Equestria, binding their very souls to the to celestial bodies, both making them into making the two of them immortal and ensuring that no other creatures could ever control their orbit. Or, so they thought, at, at the time. It was still years before Celestia and Luna were of, age, were of the age to ascend to the throne when Equestria came under attack by a creature known as Discord. Attacking on the, the behalf of some pony named, known as Slapnir, he, de he deposed the ruling council of Equestria, somehow managing to hijack control of the sun and moon, and used unthinkable power to remake the equestrian landscape into a garden of chaos. In the end, it was Celestia and Luna who found the element of harmony and sealed Discord away in a stone prison with the help of a few trusting companions. As national heroes, the ponies of Equestria waited no longer to have the two alicorns ascend to the throne. However, it was not long before Slefnir himself attacked. Unlike Discord, who acted alone, Slefnir came, came from across the sea with a massive army of monsters, griffins, minotaurs, manticores, and hundreds of others. Different types of creatures fought together to, to destroy Equestria. However, Equestrians of all tribes stood united in the, force of, in the face of, of peril, ultim, ultim, ultimately prevailing in the war. Luna herself slew Slefnir, only to find that the true war was just beginning. Before Slefnir came, there were no monsters in Equestria. There were dragons, predatory animals like bears and wolves, and natural spirits of many kinds, sure, but no monsters. When Slefnir was defeated, all the monsters in his army scattered into the untamed wilderness. They were prey, they were prey to where they preyed upon the ponies of Equestria. What made it, what made it worse for Luna was that these monsters would cower during the day, and only terrorize ponies during her night. Thus, ponies began to fear her night for the, for the darkness it brought. Still, Luna wouldn't ha let her ponies suffer. During the night, she flew across Equestria, slaying any monsters she encountered. She was powerful and relentless, yet the monsters were, seeming, monsters were seemingly endless, and Luna was quickly discovering the reason why. Slefnir was still alive, and had constructed a series, as, and had constructed a series of his magic monster creating life mirrors across Equestria. Moreover, it had been it had turned out that Slefnir was an immortal of a different sort. Whenever he died, Slefnir had the ability to simply jump into any creature created by the mirror, reshaping its body into Slefnir's own. Luna killed Slefnir again and again over the years, destroying his mirrors when she found them, to no avail. There were always more monsters, and there were always more mirrors. She began to get desperate. She made use of all of a spell her mentor had, her, men, her mentor and friend, Star Scroll the Bearded, had invented during her, the war as a last resort. A spell which could turn the very soul of a creature into a star, thus sealing it away in, from the world forever. Luna began using this power vindicative, vindictively, vindicatively, or vindictively, flinging this, filling the sky with new stars each night. Her goal was to strike fear into the hearts of the monsters as she hunted. Instead, their fear had led them to had led them to be the first to dub her Nightmare Moon. However, Luna hadn't realized the effect dis displaying the defeated corpses of the monsters she hunted in the sky, as well as her name 
her mane and tail, as well as in her mane and tail, was having on the ponies she was she was she was protecting. They began to call her Nightmare Moon as well, whispering to one another in fear and cowering within their homes whenever she passed by. Even her sister treated her differently than she did before. In the beginning, she had companions that, that fought by her side through thick and thin. Now they were dead, or otherwise returned home to protect their own villages. Luna gladly began, gradually began to feel more and more alone, more desperate. But more, Luna began, Luna, Luna gradually began to feel more alone, more desperate, more angry. In the end, Luna defeated Slepnir and sealed his soul in a particularly bright star in the sky, which she dubbed Polaris, only to realize that she had nothing left anymore, save for her crowded sky. The happy days she had envisioned once her duty had ended were gone. When she returned to Cantalot, no heroic welcome, no f only fear awaited her. The royal guards wouldn't even permit her to enter her own palace without Celestia's permission, as if they could stop her. Within a few hours of the incident, Nightmare Moon had declared herself Empress of Equestria, and had refused to lower the moon to make way for the sun. Within a month, the elements of harmony had sealed her in the moon. Just one more monster hanging in the sky. And then the stars whispered to her. Slefnir and his sealed minions slowly lent her their power. Over the next thousand years, she would grow strong. She would break free of her prison. And she would find a way to undo her star spell and free Slefnir and his, and his minions so that, she, so that monsters would once, would once again rule the world. And then she was defeated by Twilight Sparkle and her friends and cleanse of Slepnir's influence. I don't care if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It sounds awesome when it's pronounced Slepnir. It sounds Nordic. The great Nords of Scotland. <laughs> and the rest is known to ye. Luna finished her story to the wide-eyed stairs of the ponies beside her. They continued to walk along the moonlit path. Wow, Twilight gasped. To think Slepnir was alive. All the history texts said he was killed in the Battle of Cantalot. <laughs> Luna shook her head. Not even Celeste, even Celeste didn't believe us at, at first. Not until after we were punished. Mm, 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 mm. Picky, mu Picky mumbled through zip, zippered lips. Luna kindly unzipped them. Thanks, Picky exclaimed. What was slip near anyway? Luna shook her head. A pony from foreign lands that had experimented on himself? A true god? Something else? We cannot say for sure, she answered somberly. So wait, Applejack squinted. Applejack said, squinting her eyes in concentration. Did our question get answered about why these monsters were wet to the foals? We believe, Luna continued, that your foals are being pursued because they are the only three living creatures that can still be possessed by Slepnir's spirit. What? Flusha asked, surprised. But there are plenty of monsters in the world. This, Luna said, sighing, is where things get complicated. Slefnir's life mirrors had all kinds of odd rules about what he could combine and what he could possess. First of all, he couldn't possess the offspring of the monster he, cre of the monster he created, nor could he combine them. So you're saying that if the monsters weren't the first generation, they were completely immune? Or the blech! So he's saying that the monsters weren't first generation? They were completely immune? Twilight asked. Yes, Luna answered. He can only possess something created by the mirror. Wait, but Slepnir is up in space, Applejack said, confused. How could he possess anything when he's like that? He shouldn't be able to, in theory, Luna said. But he seems to think that there is a way to reverse the spell that binds him. Perhaps he intends to, es to escape. Or perhaps that new... Or perhaps what few followers he has left merely expect him to. So if he is coming back, and he wants, a, and he wants a body, Rarity began. Why bother chasing these foals? Why not simply combine a rat with a flea or some other icky thing and possess that? Sephnir's power is limited by the strength of the soul of the, of the being he possesses. <laughs> Luna answered. Sentient creatures have stronger souls. Well, then why doesn't he just create a trap for sentient beings and... Oh, Rarity frowned. 
Una nodded. Though the feelings we we get though the feeling we get was that ye were not intended to stumble upon it upon this one. It may yet have been the last that exists. Rarity sighed exasperate exasperately exasperatedly. Well, that's just our luck, isn't it? she moaned. I've heard quite enough of this about about this stuff near character. I just want to go back to the hotel and sleep and sleep and sleep on this, all of it. Well, then you're in luck, Pinky shouted out, because there it is. She pointed a hoof at the city that ap that appeared just as they followed the path around the bend. What? We are already? <laughs> Flourish, I asked, surprised. Our spell finds the shortest path, the shortest. Safest path, Luna responded. He likely took a longer route when, when first traveling these woods. Hey, someone's wa waiting for us. Twilight pointed out, squinting for a moment before opening her eyes wide. It's Spike and the Princess. Sure enough, as they grew closer to the edge of the woods, Princess Celestia and Spike, and an unconscious Rainbow Dash, lying spread out across two uncomfortable-looking royal guards, were all waiting for them. Sister, Luna cried out, hap cried out happily as she approached. So it is, so good it is to see you. <laughs> then she paused for a moment to sniff the air. Why do you smell of milk? Aww. <laughs> Star charts, magical formulas, and books lay around the cramped, the cramped dank room as the unicorn mare busily set about taking notes. The last mirror has been has been destroyed. Came a the last mirror has been destroyed. Came a sinister, booming voice, which caused her to jump, and to jump out of her seat in surprise. Oh, for the love of! Could you warn me the next time when, when you're about to do that? She snapped at the air. You want a, a, a disembodied voice to warn you when it's about to speak? Yeah, I see your point. She murmured. She muttered as she got back to, into her seat. Let's try this again. The last mirror has, has been destroyed. Is that supposed to mean something to me? The mayor asked. It means there's no more room for failure. The Starfall spell must be completed, and soon. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about a spell invented by Star Roller Beard himself. Decoding it isn't easy. Is that name supposed to, supposed to mean something to me? Touche, the mayor said grimly. Are you not the primary living authority on, in the field of star magic? The voice asked. Yes, but I was kicked out of the academy for, just, for suggesting the stars were actually monsters. That's why I've been... We believe you. That should be recognition for you. That should be recognition for you. That, that should be enough recognition for you. It's difficult for me to enjoy being recognized by the... Er... Beings that full napped me. You aren't here to enjoy yourself. The voice responded, dropping to a threatening tone. You are here to do as we say. That is, if you and your family want to continue living. What were your parents' names again? The mayor gulped. The mayor quietly gulped before responding. There's no need for you to know. She answered. The, spa, the star, salt, the star, the star false bell will, will be completed on schedule. Good. It is time for our rebirth. The time for our rebirth is soon at hand. Do not fail us. Lula Moon. As the voice faded and the mayor once again sat alone on her sat alone at her at her desk, she couldn't help but mutter, "I prefer Trixie." Holy shit! <sighs> fuck. And every single comment is about oh fuck Trixie. Um, yeah, that was chapter, uh, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, for The Moonlit Path by Three Power of My Little Mommies. This has been Nightlife, and I still have two more to go. One, an awesome steampunk type thing with ponies and sex. No, came with that, came with a sex. <sighs> And the next one is uh, Vinyl and Octavia University Days. Uh, so, 
yeah. Hmm. <sighs> Nightlife out, mofos. <laughs>